Now, if you'd like to know what the camera settings were for each of these seven images, don't go away. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I like to post photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks, and do occasional gear reviews as well. So if you're new, please consider subscribing. In this video, what I want to do is focus on camera settings. We're going to take a look at seven images that I've captured, not necessarily with the same camera, and I'm going to share with you the camera settings. But I don't just want to share the camera settings, I want to explain to you why I use those particular settings. Was it to achieve a particular look? Did I achieve the look? Um, and because I want you to be able to go and try this out for yourselves as well, I'm going to show you how to make those changes. I'm going to show you how to set it up on your camera as well. No time to waste. Let's get into it. Now, the first image we're going to take a look at is this one, which is a picture of lightning striking over the Brisbane skyline. It's an image that I'm really, really pleased with. And it's an image I, I remember particularly well because on this day, I was actually running a street photography course here um, here in Brisbane um, so I had a small group of six people walking around the streets of Brisbane taking photos and I was using this camera which is the Fujifilm X100S. It's a camera that I absolutely love and it's a perfect street photography camera for various reasons. It's nice and small and compact and I absolutely love it. So this photo was actually taken with this Fujifilm camera but this picture could have been taken with a Canon, Nikon, Sony. It doesn't matter so much about the camera, it's the settings and the way in which you set the camera up and use the camera that's important. So we got rained off on that day because of the storm so most of the people went home but two of us stayed back to see if we could capture some lightning images. So we found ourselves a nice spot to take some photos and we popped the cameras onto tripods. Now let me tell you what camera settings I used. ISO 200, aperture f9, shutter speed 20 seconds. Now let me explain those settings to you and then I'm going to show you how to set it up on your cameras. ISO 200. Now ISO keep it low. The lower the number the cleaner your image will look. Sometimes you have to increase your ISO but on this occasion, I didn't need to. So I left my ISO at my default, which is 200. Shutter speed, 20 seconds. Now that's a long time. That means that when you press the shutter button to take a picture, the shutter opens for 20 seconds. Now that's a long time, but it's perfect for this type of photo because number one, it was dark and I need to let more light into the camera. And the longer the shutters open, the more light the camera will be able to record. But also, I'm trying to capture lightning and I can't predict when it's gonna go off. So, if you do a 20 second exposure, and no lightning, it doesn't matter. You do another 20 second exposure and then another until you actually get it. And sometimes you get lucky. And while the shutters open for 20 seconds, you get one or two or maybe even three lightning strikes. And that can look amazing. Now for the aperture, I went for f9. That's a smaller aperture, even though the number is bigger. f9, f11, around that type of ballpark is generally good for landscape type photography because you get a lot of sharpness for your image. It's called a deeper uh, or extended depth of field. And um, a good way of doing this type of photo is to maybe not shoot full manual, which is what I was doing. Um, a good way of doing this is to shoot using the shutter priority mode. Now this on your camera dial is either S or TV, depending on what camera you've got. Let me show you how to set it up. So I'm using a Nikon camera, so I'm selecting S on the dial for shutter priority. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about three things, shutter, aperture and ISO. These are three ways in which you can control light. These are collectively known as the exposure triangle. Now I have made separate videos on all three of these. You will find links in the description below the video. It's having the ability to slow the shutter down for a whole 20 seconds that allows me to take amazing photos at night like this one and also capture the lightning. Looking at the back of the camera, the S confirms we're in shutter priority mode. Over to the right is our ISO. It's already set to 200, but we can change this easily by using the I button. Going back to 200. And next we're going to look at the shutter speed, which is over on the left here. Now what we want to do is slow the shutter speed down, turning the dial on the top rear of the camera, dialing to the left for a slower shutter speed. We're looking for 20 seconds. This is the number 20, followed by what looks like a quotation mark. You'll see that as we do this, the aperture in the middle is adjusted automatically by the camera. That's the great thing about shutter priority mode. Now on a Canon camera, shutter priority is referred to as time value or TV. 
shutter speed is to the left, ISO to the right, aperture, if I press the shutter button, it's shown in the middle. So the same layout as with the Nikon camera. Again, dial into the left, the dial is on the top of the Canon camera. You'll see the shutter speed on the left changing. I'm gonna dial in 20 seconds and the aperture is automatically selected by the camera. And we're ready to go. Now image number two is this one. This is a picture of the Story Bridge, which spans the Brisbane River. Just like picture number one, this is also of course a nighttime photo. And this was actually taken with the Canon 80D, which is the camera that I'm using to record my video. It's a great camera. And this was also shot using the standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. So not a pro lens, just the standard kit lens. So that goes to show that you can take photos even with fairly standard kit. Now, for this exposure, this is another long exposure, I went for a longer shutter speed than with the lightning shot. This is a 30 second exposure. The aperture this time was f10 and the ISO was again at 200. And what I really like about this photo is the way the clouds are blurring. It gives the picture a slightly surreal, almost sort of painting type quality to it. And that blur is of course movement. Because the shutter is open for 30 seconds, anything that moves during that time will blur. And in the case of this image, it's the clouds being the most obvious thing, but it's also the river surface. So you can't really see waves or any sort of motion in the water. It's all soft and blurry. And this is quite, I think, quite a nice look. So again, the longer shutter speed because you're shooting at nighttime, but because I also wanted to get some motion in the image, particularly with the clouds, aperture F10, again, a smaller aperture because that's great for landscape type photography and the ISO 200. Let me show you how to set this one up. And again, we're gonna look at shutter priority mode. So with the previous image we shot at 20 seconds, all we gotta do now is extend that to 30 seconds by dialing to the left with the dial on the top of the Canon camera, and we are ready to go. Moving on to the Nikon, same thing again. We extend the shutter speed by using the dial on the rear of the camera. The camera's looked after the aperture for us, so we don't need to worry about that. And you may notice that at the bottom of the screen it says subject is too dark. Largely, this can be ignored on the Nikon cameras. Now this picture, as you can see, is a picture of somebody on a bike. And what's interesting about this picture is none of it is actually very sharp. There's a lot of blur in this image. And for that reason, some people don't like it. I mean, I quite like it, but some people don't. And that's fine. That's what keeps photography, like any art form, interesting because it's subjective. What I like about a picture, the next person might not like. So that is fine. Now, the reason for the blur is I wanted to show movement and speed. So here I'm using the classic panning technique, which is a technique used by sports photographers to show movement. And uh, what you're doing here is you're panning or moving the camera in time with the subject to try and keep the subject reasonably sharp, but you're moving the camera in such a way that the background blurs. Now to achieve this, you need a slower shutter speed. So for this picture, the shutter speed was one fifth of a second. So technically a slow shutter speed, not nearly as long as for the previous two images, but a slow shutter speed, that's one fifth of a second. Um, aperture was F6, that's a wide aperture because it was later in the day and I wanted to get more light into the camera. And the ISO has gone up a little, a little bit from my default of 200, to 250. So ISO 250, aperture 5.6, shutter speed 1 fifth of a second. So because you're moving the camera really fast as the bike goes by, the background blurs, but because you're moving the camera in time with the subject, you get the subject reasonably sharp. The panning technique is pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below whether you like it. Let me show you how to do this one. Again, for this one, you can go manual, but again, shutter priority is a really cool mode to use. Having selected a low ISO, all I've got to do on the Canon camera is dial to the right and I'm looking for one fifth of a second now. I don't want to stop here because this is 0 0.5 or half a second. I keep going until I see one fifth of a second and the camera's looking after the aperture for me. And of course, moving on to the Nikon camera, the process is exactly the same. Dial into the right until I get the shutter speed I want, one fifth of a second. This next image was taken at a place called Coolangatta on the Gold Coast here in Australia. If ever you come and visit, check out Coolangatta on the Gold Coast. 
beautiful beaches and very, very popular with surfers. On this particular day, I got up very early. I was setting up the camera when it was dark, so I wanted to get a really nice spot. And what I'm trying to achieve in this picture, of course, is the, um, the motion of the waves as they crash over the rocks. But I don't want the waves to be sharp. I wanted them to be blurry. I was using a Nikon D300 for this image with a Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter wide angle lens. And of course, because I'm doing a slow shutter speed shot, the camera, like some of the other photos I've showed you today, um, the camera was on a tripod. It, really essential to get a tripod if you're doing long exposures. For this image, the exposure isn't actually that long, it's just half a second. So camera settings, half a second, so 0.5 seconds shutter speed, aperture f22 and ISO 100. So I've dropped the ISO from my usual default down to 100 so I don't get any digital noise half a second exposure to let some light into the camera and to not let too much light into the camera because the sun was popping up over the horizon, I've closed the aperture down to f22. It's a picture I really, really like. I'm really proud of it. And I think I struck gold on this particular day as well because I love the clouds coming up over the horizon as well. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about shutter priority in this mode. Let me show you how I set this up using the manual mode on the camera. With the Nikon in the manual mode, we have control of every feature. So the first thing we're going to do is dial to the left to slow the shutter speed down. I'm selecting a shutter speed of half a second. Looking at the meter, we're clearly overexposing. So next we're going to go to the ISO and take that from 200 down to 100. Checking the meter again, still overexposed. Aperture is next. Holding the button on the top of the camera, dialing to the right will make the aperture smaller. Note the bigger number. You can see that affecting the meter, and once the meter is balanced, we're ready to take our picture. Now on the Canon camera, again in the manual mode, first thing we're going to do is select a shutter speed of half a second by dialing to the left. Nice and easy. Okay, next thing we're going to do is check the meter. It's overexposing, so we're going to drop the ISO from 200 to 100. Check the meter once again, still overexposing, so we're now going to adjust the aperture. Holding the AV button, dialing to the right, and you can see this is affecting the exposure. Notice the bigger F number indicating the smaller aperture. Once the meter is balanced, we're ready to take our picture. Next up is another sunrise photo. This one taken just a few minutes from our office here on the Brisbane Bayside. And this photo was taken with a Canon Rebel T6 or 1300D using the standard stock 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Now, because it's um, early in the morning and the light isn't too good, again, slightly slower shutter speed, one fortieth of a second, not super slow, but still worth putting the camera on a tripod. Aperture F13 and ISO 100. So you're getting the hang of it now, hopefully. ISO low, so you don't get any digital noise, ISO 100. F13 is a smaller aperture, great for landscapes, and the slower shutter speed, one fortieth of a second, helps just to let enough light into the camera. The more that sun comes up and the brighter it gets, the faster the shutter speed would have to then go. What I love about this photo is the gradual, uh, the graduation from blue through to orange on the horizon. I think it's a pretty nice shot. So on a Canon camera in TV or shutter priority mode, all you need to do is select the shutter speed, 1 40th of a second, aperture is looked after by the camera. Easy, ready to go. And repeating the same process for the Nikon camera, we're gonna change the shutter speed to 1 40th of a second by dialing to the right with the dial, and you'll see the aperture is being adjusted automatically by the camera. That once again is the beauty of shutter priority mode. Next image is clearly very different to the ones before it. This is a sports image of the Brisbane lines taken during a training session here in Brisbane with the Nikon Z6 mirrorless camera and a 70 to 200 millimeter telephoto lens. Now with this type of sports photo, you don't want any blur, unlike with the previous shots. You wanna capture detail and sharpness. You wanna record the action. So you're using a much faster shutter speed. Camera settings here were shutter speed one two thousandth of a second, 
Aperture f 2.8 and ISO 640. So ISO for me, default is usually 200, but here I've had to bump the ISO up a bit higher to 640. Aperture f 2.8. So I was lucky because the lens I was using has this really wide aperture and that helps me get more light down the lens and into the camera. And that's just as well because I'm not allowing much time for the light to enter the camera. I'm choosing a fast shutter speed, one two thousandth of a second, because that's the sort of shutter speed that will freeze this movement. But because the shutter opens and closes now so quickly, unlike with the previous shots, I'm not giving the camera much time to record light. So I'm making up for that by opening the aperture really wide to 2.8, and furthermore, because it was a bit of a dull afternoon, I'm bumping the ISO up to 640. Okay, those are the settings. Let me show you how to set this one up. On the Nikon Z6, we've already set the ISO to 640. We need to increase the shutter speed now to one two thousandth of a second. Aperture's being looked after by the camera. F 2.8 is the maximum aperture, 640 ISO and one two thousandth of a second. Now my final image is another sports photo, but I've decided to include a second sports photo because the previous photo was taken with a Nikon Z6 and a really fancy 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So quite an expensive bit of kit. Whereas this photo is taken with Nikon's entry level D3500. So I wanted to include an image taken with a cheaper, more entry level camera to show you that you can get really good results. Again, as I often say in my videos, it's not always about the gear, it's how you use it. The camera settings for this image, same as the previous one, shutter speed one two thousandth of a second, aperture F 7.1 and ISO 1600. So, same shutter speed as with the previous photo. Aperture 7.1, now that is not as wide as the previous photo, which explains why in this image the ISO has had to go up higher to 1600. Now with this image, because the ISO is much higher, there is some digital noise in the image. It does look a little bit grainy, but when you consider this image is taken with an entry level camera, I think it really looks pretty cool. So camera settings for this one, let me show you. So as I mentioned, the final image was shot on this camera, the Nikon D3500. In shutter priority, I start by increasing the shutter speed up to one two thousandth of a second and get into trouble straight away because as you can see, the light meter tells us that we're gonna underexpose. So as I did on the day, I'm gonna increase the ISO to 1600 and that's it. We are now balanced and ready to shoot. And finally, with the Canon camera in the TV or shutter priority mode, once again, we increase the shutter speed to one two thousandth of a second. Press the shutter button and the flashing F number tells us we're in trouble. So we've got to find a way of getting more light into the camera. Go to the ISO, increase it to 1600. F number stops flashing. Markers in the middle on the light meter. We're ready to go. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've picked up some tips and hopefully you're inspired to go out and try some of these techniques for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget you can leave your comments, questions and suggestions down below. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.